Morning guys. I'm out on the beautiful Mitamita again this morning in northeast Victoria. Um, it's the end of May, it's pretty cool, and uh, yeah, hopefully the fish are starting to move up from the dams. I caught a lovely brownie here yesterday, so uh, we're going to give it another go today. We'll see if there are fish in the main river, or uh, whether they're more moving up the side creeks. Anyway, I'm going to give it a bit of a go here, and uh, if we don't do any good, then we might move to a different location and try one of the side creeks. So I'm going to hit this fairly sunny patch first up. I'm uh, anticipating that with the water being cold at this time of year um, the fish will become more active as the water warms up so I'll try going for a sunny area first because that's going to be the first water to warm up obviously <clears throat> This is not overly fast water either, and that's obviously intentional. Um, when the water's cold, the trout's metabolism is slower, and they tend to like to sit in the slightly slower stuff. Not going to spend too long on this, it's not super prime water. But being the first water that's got sun on it, I thought I'd give it a quick shot. Just trying to get into that bubble line over the other side there. I was only intending to fish two runs today fairly short stretch of maybe 150 or 200 meters and I knew that the best water was going to come later on in the day. Still, I wanted to fish some of this back section of the pool very slowly and carefully to see if there was anything sitting back here. But in the back of my mind, I knew it wasn't going to really start happening until that water started warming up quite a bit. So you'll notice I'm fishing at a fair distance here. <clears throat> um, that's because the water is pretty clear and it's not a lot of disturbance on the surface. So I don't anticipate that I'm going to be able to get too close to fish. So I'm trying to fish as far away as I can get a reasonable drift to give myself the best chance of putting the fly in front of a fish without spooking it first in this particular water. I'm just going to take a quick water temp here. Okay, yeah, it's quite cool. It's about 9 degrees Celsius, that's about 48 Fahrenheit. So, uh, I think as the day warms up, Hopefully the water temperature should come up by a few degrees and the fish might start to get active. We'll go and try a different uh, different bit of water. This slow water is not really uh, producing any action yet. So I'm just starting to be able to get a little bit more visibility into the contours of the river at the moment and I can see there's a little bit of a deeper slot that starts there, a little bit of a drop off and a slot of sort of darker green water through that side there. So I might just try a few through that. This water is definitely on the slow side for Euronymphing. But I'm hoping that with the early morning cool water, there might be a big, lazy, fat, brown trout down in the bottom of this trench somewhere, willing to take a fly drifted in front of his nose. Okay. I think I need to go up a bead size here. I don't know that I'm quite getting depth. Okay. 
Yep, let's go up a bead size. We'll go up to a 3.5. Despite my best efforts, I just wasn't finding any action in the deeper, slower sections at the back of the pool. So it was time to reevaluate the strategy. Well, I'm just struggling a bit so far, guys. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything happening. There's nothing hatching. Um, and I haven't found any active fish. Haven't seen a rise. Um, yeah, anyway, I guess I'm just going to keep moving. I'm trying to fish close to the bottom because uh, obviously the fish are not very active at the moment. Um, and I guess I've just got to keep searching until I find an area where there's fish. Anyway, we'll push on. I moved a short distance up the pool where there was a bit more flow and started looking at some of the softer edges of the main current. That's when things started to happen. Oh! <laughs> take on the swing then. There was a little bit of insect activity beginning to start too, and that was the trigger for it all to kick off. Suddenly, the fish seemed to switch into active feeding mode, and it started to turn into a really good session. Yes. Not a big one. All right, nice little brownie. Guys, nice little brown trout. All right, I'm just gonna let him go from the net. There he goes. Just a few bugs starting to come off now. <coughs> the water's start got a bit of sun on it and it's starting to warm up. That's a good sign. Hopefully, the fish will start becoming a bit more active. This zone at the top of the pool, where the riffle starts to deepen into a little bit of a bucket, is often a hot spot for fish. The riffles produce most of the aquatic insect food that comes down into the pool, so it's a natural spot for fish to queue up. There's one. of that guy. Nice. That's a slightly better fish. Alright. Let's get this. Yeah, he took the little tiny little mayfly. There we go guys. Beautiful. Too slow. I just saw a fish jump out here. Well, in a big one. Let's see if we can catch him. That might have been him. I didn't find fish up in the riffle zone itself, so I crossed over above the pool and started heading up into the tail of the next big pool. I fished this stretch before, and I had a pretty good idea that this pool was going to be the best pool for the day. 
which is why I'd left it for the second half. I figured that as the temperature rose, the fishing would improve, so leave the best for last. There's one. <sighs> Flies out. There he is, nice little brownie. All right, let's release him from the net. There he goes. I was still well short of the prime water at the top of the pool, but I wanted to work my way up slowly, rather than just rush up and pick the eyes out of the top of the pool because there's usually more fish to be caught further back in a prime pool like this when you know that it's going to hold several fish. Yeah, there's one. <clears throat> Come on, fella. Here he is. Beautiful. Bugs about now. Mayflies around. I was still catching small and medium sized fish at this point, but I was hoping that there was going to be the chance of some bigger fish as I got up into the prime water at the top. I was eyeing off that inside bend, coming in at the top of the pool up there. I knew there was a good shelving riffle up there, some nice underwater structure. It was hard to resist the urge to run straight up there and fish it. I don't think I'm really getting down now, so it might be time to change that point fly. Oh, there's a fish. <sighs> I'll just try a couple over in that current seam on the far side in the slower water over there. And then I'm going to change up in a minute to a heavier point fly. Alright, I've changed up to a 3.5 bead on the point. Let's see how that goes. Definitely a lot of bugs about now. Little sort of tan or light grey mayflies. There's fish.
Yeah, that's a bit of brownie. Look at the hands wet. Just in the corner of the mouth there. There we go, guys. Nice. Nothing in the brown. Just let him go. There he goes. There had to be had to be a good fish in this run. There's probably more because it's just at the top of that long pool that's been producing quite a few. So let's see if we can find some more now. Here's one. that one. That's another decent one. He took the tiny little dropper. That fish, there he goes. Nice. Right. So there might be a few stacked up in here. That's good. a stick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was on one then. Yeah, there's fish. That's a better one. The faster one, this one. Yeah, he's a decent fish. He took the point fly this time. He's not the not the monster that I caught yesterday, but he's all right. There he is, guys. Beautiful, beautiful brown trout. Off you go, mate. All right. Well, they're really stacked up here. All right, lost my rig. I'll uh, retie. There's obviously a few snags and things in there, but. Uh, there seems to be fish too. It seemed that the further up the pool I got, the bigger the fish got. That was certainly a trend that I was hoping was going to continue. There was a lovely shelving riffle at the top of the pool here, where it dropped into a deeper bucket, and I always love fishing those spots. 
This particular one had structure in it as well, which is even better. Oh yeah, there's a fish. Oh, he's a nice one. Ooh. Oh, this is a good fish. Oh, he's trying to get me over. Oh! Bugger. He broke me off. He got me over into those sticks. That was a big fish. All right, yeah, I've still got the dropper. He took the point fly and broke me off. Well, that was a big fish, guys. He um, hooked up sort of in the deep bucket in the, in the drop off there, and then he managed to get me over into the sticks, the logs on the other side there, and, uh, and broke me off. I couldn't really stop him. <laughs> it was a good one. All right. I'll retie. All right, guys, I've re rigged. Same again. Pink bead Tassie Devil on the point, three mil. Seems to be working. Seems to be working, and uh, all of the mayflies that have been buzzing about have been sort of light tan, grey sort of colour. So, uh, yeah, we'll stick with this. There's a fish. Oh, there's a good one. Sitting just under that lip. This is a good fish. That's a big brown. On 6x tippet, the braking strain is only around about three pounds. So there's not a lot that you can do if you hook up to a big fish. You've just got to protect that tippet, try to put steady pressure on it, and hope for the best. I'll try and keep him away from any snags. This is a big fish, guys. Oh, yeah. I hope it doesn't get me into a snag. This is a big fish, guys. That is a big, heavy, heavy brown. He's got not going to like me when he sees me. You see him there? Oh, I nearly had the net under him. Oh. Netting a big fish like this on a long, almost 11 foot rod and super light tippet can be one of the hardest parts. This fish was giving it everything to try to stay away from the net. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> that is a cracking trout, guys. What's he gonna go? How many pounds? Let's see. Oh, stay still. Yeah, he's about four and a half pounds. Not quite as big as the one I got yesterday, but he's not far off. That is a cracking brown. Cracking trout, guys. Fly out of there for a start. 
There we are guys, beautiful, beautiful fish. Four and a half pounds, just gorgeous. All right, let's get it back in the water. There she goes. Oh, that was unreal. That was in almost the same place that I lost a fish before that took me over into, uh, into the sticks on the far side. I doubt it was the same fish. So if there's two there, there might be more. I'll get back in there again. So obviously the rising water temperatures had a fair bit to do with the fish coming on the bite at the top of this pool. But I don't think that's all that was going on. This was prime water and there are a few reasons for that I reckon. There's a great riffle leading at the top of this pool which would have been providing a good food source. But the biggest difference between this and the last pool was that the feeding lie at the top also held great cover and a good current break for the fish to sit behind. And I reckon that's what you call a prime lie. There you go guys, that was my day. And it was awesome. Had a lot of fun. Got some good fish. Um, landed that beautiful four and a half pounder at the end and got busted off by another one um, that I'm guessing might have been a similar sort of size. Uh, and yeah, lots of other smaller fish as well. So that was a lot of fun. The fishing definitely warmed up um, when the sun warmed up the river. Uh, it was pretty slow to start this morning, but once the water got a bit of sun on it and the temperature started to rise, uh, we had a bit of a hatch, some mayflies started coming off and the fish definitely came on the bite. So that was sensational. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. That's just the first day of a, uh, a trip down here. I'm off over the mountains now. I've got about 100 k's to go to uh, my final destination. Um, so I'm knocking off a little bit early and going to get over the mountains before the sun gets down. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.